Well, good morning. It's good to see you uh, this morning. Uh, glad that you're here and uh, glad to be back with you. I just want to uh, thank you for the visitors that come. Just make yourself at home. And uh, this morning, i got a couple of cards I need to read this morning. Uh, and uh, I'll do that now and then do a little announcements. But uh, uh, it says, uh, thank you so much for all you did. The part of uh, the, the spent food and uh, the hospitality meant so much to our family in our time of sorrow, uh, the Lewis DeVore family. And uh, also I have one that says, uh, thank you so much. Um, the world's a whole lot better place because of people like you who give real joy and pleasure by the nice things that they do. And when your recent thoughtfulness still very much in mind, this is meant to bring a thank you of the very warmest kind. Just a note to say thanks. Uh, you all, thank you all so much for the beautiful flowers, the food, the phone calls, the visits, and most of all, the prayers during the loss of our mother. She truly loved Mount Carmel Church and loved you all as well. We appreciate everything and pray God's wonderful blessings upon you all, the Tripp family. Remember these two families. Continue to pray for them, and uh, and uh, through the weeks ahead. And uh, so, I've got a couple other announcements. Uh, uh, we will have a uh, uh, a dunking, a baptism <laughs> uh, after the morning service. Miss Diane uh, is going to be baptized. So, uh, uh, and also uh, the seniors will be going to bees. In Chattanooga um, next Saturday, the bus is going to be leaving around 11 o'clock in the morning, and uh, you'll be up there to eat about noon. So come if you can go do that. And also the youth are going uh, bowling that night. So if you didn't get fed enough that morning, you'll be able to do something that afternoon. You'll be uh, uh, here at church about 3:30 to go to Stevie B's to eat, and uh, at four o'clock uh, at the Stevie B's, and then afterwards they're going to go and uh, uh, do a little bowling out at probably at Rainsville, yes, at 6 o'clock. So. And don't forget our uh, fall festival is October 31st, so Tuesday. Uh, you know, if you can help, you can see Miss Linda and Miss Tina about those things. Um, and um, we've got brochures up here, uh, flyers that you can put out. So uh, after church, if you don't mind, grab one. Uh, two or three, and uh, hand them out, put them up somewhere, be able to hand those out. So, uh, And also, uh, um, they're going to have a benefit singing for Brother David Talley uh, the last Saturday this month, the 28th, at 6.30. That's over at Gurley at Ships Baptist Church. Um, and they're going to have a plate lunches uh, there from 4 to 6 beforehand. So if you would, uh, if you have an opportunity to be able to go, uh, it would be a good time, good singing. Uh, so those are a few announcements. Uh, also, we'll just remember our, po our prayer list. Uh, as I said this morning, it's not quite as big as it was uh, last week, but uh, still uh, be praying for that and pray for the pulpit committee and uh, also on those. Does anyone have a, another prayer request or anything that they'd like to mention at this time? So if they know about If not, then no. Uh, I'll ask the young men to come around. We're going to take up our morning tithes and offerings.
Choir comes down. If you would, let's stand for just a moment. And, uh, fellowship, shake hands with our visitors this morning. Make them welcome and uh, just tell somebody you love them this morning.
Good morning. I hope everybody had a good week. Uh, glad to see you back out today. I was sitting here and listening to the beautiful music and the songs this morning. Done a good job. And uh, I love those old hymns. And uh, I hope that you've already felt the Lord's presence today. I really do. Uh, I did uh, in Sunday school. I did again. It just gets a little stronger uh, and through the day, uh, through time at church. And I I hope that you've already felt his touch this morning. I, I hope and desire that you've already felt that. Um, I just want to thank you for uh, loving me and my family and just, just being here today. I'm uh, glad to see your faces again uh, and uh, just glad to see you back out again. Uh, some of them missed your faces and some of you have been out sick or different things, but just glad to see everybody back this morning. So if you got your Bibles this morning, you could be turning to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I want to start this morning in verse 6, and uh, we'll probably read to verse 11. So if you'll follow along with me, then we'll read this and then uh, have prayer. It says in verse 6 of uh, chapter 5, uh, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die. Yet per adventure, uh, for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Let's pray. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today and just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit just take over the service, Lord, and just use me and just hide me, Lord, that they just see you on the cross and the things that you've done for us. And thank you for forgiveness of our sins and just dying for us on Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. We pray, God, for the service today that you'll just meet the needs that's in our hearts, uh, whether whatever it is, Lord, that you'll just satisfy each heart here today that you'll just speak to them. Help us, Lord, to open our hearts up and just uh, enjoy your word, Lord, and your fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. And we just ask all these things in your precious name this morning, Lord. Amen. Uh, so this morning I want to talk to you. Uh, what brought me to this uh, scripture is uh, verse 8. And uh, if you really sit around and you just read this verse and just continue to read it and think about it throughout the day or the week, It'll do something to you. It said, but, but God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There is no other greater love, the Bible says, than a man lay down his life for his brother and sister. But Christ did that. and we, 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 I say this a lot of times. We try to comprehend the love that God has for us. But God's got a love greater than what you and I can comprehend. It's just the fact. Uh, we, 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 we read about it some. We look at it some. Sometimes in our families we have disputes and things. And I want to talk something about this today. And we'll go back to the scriptures here and I'll take it verse by verse. But a lot of times in, in our lives, in our families, well, we have disputes. It's just, it's just a human fact. Uh, it, it's more common today than it was years ago. I don't know. Everybody can't get along, and, and the world's that way. It doesn't even have to be family, just be people in general. The problem with it is, is because we don't relinquish ourselves and let the Lord do the work in our lives. We've got to be child of God first. We've got to say that we are a sinner. We need the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives to, 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 to put that love in our hearts. You can't love someone unless you've got love in your heart. Uh, it's just not humanly possible. Uh, the only way to forgive and to forget and to get over those uh, 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 disputes and to have some reconciliation 
is for God to live in your life because that's what the Bible teaches. You know, whether a man asks seven times 70 or uh, 700 times a day, you're to forgive him. So uh, we look at this, and we have that, as I said, in a lot of families. We, we, we uh, uh, look at that, and reconciliation or coming back together is a great loving feeling. It, there's nothing beyond it. You, you picture it and experience it some here when people come back together and ask each other for, for forgiveness, and it, it's meant, and it's out of love, and there's just something that overflows that. In that situation. Well, the same thing happens with God and the Lord Jesus Christ in us. And, and, and on Calvary that he died for us and this morning. So we'll look at this at verse 6. And I, I want to really point out some things. And you just bear with me. And you just follow along. But it says, for when we were yet without strength, there is no hope. You're not able to get up. You're not able to get out of the situation. We see this a lot of times. You uh, in my life, I'm not uh, that old, but I'm old enough to know what a little pain is already. Uh, but if you go visit the nursing home or some uh, hospital, you will find some people, and they don't necessarily have to be older folks. Uh, they can be young children. Uh, but they have lost their strength. They lay in a bed and they're not able to get up. Uh, they're, they're in a, 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 a place that they have to have help to get out of. Uh, that some of them, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's due to sickness, I understand that, and different things, just aging uh, and having to deal with life and growing old, uh, that's part of it. But uh, uh, we see here that we don't have any strength. He's not just talking to you, he's talking to me, he's talking to the entire world that they are without strength. There is no way that you can help yourself get out of sin. There is no way that you can do good enough. There's no way you can work your way out of it. There's no way that you're going to be good enough to get your life and have enough strength to get yourself out of sin. Uh, you can't have the strength to stand. You can't have the strength to get out of bed. You can't have the strength to get out of that situation. Uh, uh, so there is not any way that I can stand before God as a sinner and be able to even stand before God because I wouldn't have the strength to do anything. Uh, we're weak and, 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 as a human race. Uh, we live in a situation that we can't get out of. But hold on, I got hope. Uh, but in due time, that means at a point in time uh, that, that Christ died for the ungodly. That's me. That's you. Say, are you ungodly? I certainly was. Were you? Absolutely you were. Uh, when he looked at you, he just seen a, a, a sinner. Uh, not going after anything that God has. Uh, his purpose in life. Uh, morally. Might not even been good morally. Uh, unless your mom and dad taught you well enough. Uh, to uh, respect elders and such things as that. But the thing about it is, uh, we were ungodly people. Uh, the, the grace of God and the mercy of God is what holds that back. It's still being had back today, Brother Fred. It is coming. That day of wrath is coming. But through God's goodness and mercy, He holds it back. Was I do it? Were you do it? Absolutely. Uh, should we have suffered it? Absolutely. Oh, when Christ went to Calvary and died on Calvary, uh, the Lord had ever, God Himself, had ever right to send every angel He had. And get everybody to destroy the human race right then and there. But he substituted something there on Calvary and it's called peace. He made, instead of making war, he made peace uh, with you and I. So we see here that Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. Okay, in verse 7. Uh, uh, and you have to understand, I'll get to this in a moment. But uh, 7 and 8 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Jewish people understood these three people, these three things right here. Righteous man, a good man, and a vile sinner. There's three, three things here. Uh, when, when you look at the Jewish 
they look at the uh, people in three categories. Righteous man, you say, well, that sounds pretty good. No, that's a Pharisee that's going through the right rights to do everything. Uh, an outward appearance, we do it today. Everybody doesn't know how your home life is. That's why it's so important we talk to guys a lot of time. I could ask anything I wanted to know about any of y'all, and I wouldn't even have to ask you. I'd go to your wife. I can tell you all about you if I go to your wife. And you ladies can go to your, their husbands and ask the same thing because that's where the rubber meets the road. That's what's going on. The, the life, the true person is known at home. And I say that by husband and wife because you've lived together and you know everything about one another so there's a relationship there that's built over years of time that you know one another. But uh, we see here that a righteous person is one that sometimes does things outwardly, but inwardly they're not there. You say, well, that sounds, that sounds a little strange, but it says even for a good man, you know, uh, uh, some might prepare to die or a uh, preventure to die for. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, give up your life for somebody else. Uh, we see all that here, but uh, uh, in verse 8, then it gets back to us. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We weren't the righteous ones. We weren't the good ones. We were the ungodly sinner that God died for, and He demonstrated that by saying right here, commendeth his love toward us. What's he made? He, he has put on display his love for eternity. He has put on display his love for us as an individual, for us as a church, and for us as the world because Jesus Christ said uh, in John 3, 16, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, so on Calvary, God has demonstrated His love. We try to comprehend that to the best that we can do. Uh, uh, you need to come to the old-fashioned uh, uh, altar. You need to go to Calvary. You need to see Christ uh, uh, hung on the cross for you and for me. Uh, that's absolutely true. But God, uh, He showed His love to us. And the thing about it is, is why we were yet sinners. We didn't have to move up two categories uh, to get any help. He died for us and showed us that He loved us while we were yet ungodly. So the hope is this, that you have Jesus Christ and that He lives in your heart and that you once were ungodly sinner and we're going to go on here and see that you can be much more than that if you trust the Lord. And it says in verse 9, much more than. Now, get that word, much more. Uh, being now justified. So Paul is saying, we're now justified by His blood, by the Lord's blood. We shall be saved from wrath through Him. What's the wrath? The wrath to come. The one that he's talked about. Uh, you can find it in, uh, we was talking about uh, Second Peter this morning. You can find it in Jude. You can find it in Revelation, uh, the tribulation area that comes on the world. Uh, but it, let's look at this logically in verse 9. If you're, when you were young and I first got saved, I looked at this. And this is something that helped me. And I hope it helps you. How can God punish you and I, if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, why would He pour out wrath on us? Now think about this a minute. If His Son lives in my heart and I'm washed by His blood and God loves His Son so much that He raised Him from the dead, sits on the uh, uh, Father's right hand, there's nobody. Uh, uh, I say that in general. Let's look at it. That God, you could say, He doesn't love anybody no more than He loves His Son. And He loves His Son so much that He gave Him for you and I. So He loves you and I. If Jesus Christ, He loves you and I, 
just as much as he loved Jesus Christ. That is something that should blow your mind away. God himself that made the heavens, the earth, and everything loves David. Are you telling me that he loves me as much as he does Christ? I'm telling you that because that's the way God thinks. And that's the way God is. He is love. He is Christ. He loves you. And it shows here that he can, I, I believe this. He's not going to pour out wrath on you and I. If I've got his son in my heart, why would he do that and hurt his son? The one that put him on Calvary and was sent to Calvary was God. But man is the one that went through the act and put him there. Now I understand it. It's a, it's a position. God chose to do that to save us. And thank God he did. And thank God he did not spare his only son so that I could have eternal life. And you too. But it's by these hands. You and I put him on Calvary's cross. We didn't know better, you say to speak. We were ungodly sinners. And we hung the Son of God, the one that would save the world. We're guilty. We're guilty. But God paid a price there with His Son. So in verse 10 it says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more <clears throat> being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. So what's he saying? If we were once enemies with God, and you were, if you weren't a, a son of his, didn't believe in Jesus Christ, you were not on his side. You were reconciled by Christ, uh, by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So if, if Christ... Uh, was born when God accepted that payment he said son come out of the grave that's what he said cause sin he didn't sin he died for mine and your sins he was a perfect man he was the son of God he didn't die because of sin like you and I do he died for sin uh, to pay my sin debt and your sin debt uh, uh, so we are saved by him much more we shall be saved by his life so when Christ was raised out of the ground the same by, uh, he talks about that the same spirit that lives in me now the same spirit that quickened Christ and told him to come out of the grave lives in me so I, if I die I'll be raised again uh, because of Christ and because of that blood uh, that's in me and it says in verse 11, Not only so, but we also joy in, God, joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement or the reconciliation. <clears throat> Where's your joy at? So well, I've had a bad week. Had a bad day. Everything I touched tore up. My house is burning down right now. Do you still have joy? The great difference between joy and happiness, happiness is external. It is due to effects in the life. You can have things, see people, and it'll bring you happiness. Joy only comes from in here. Joy is sent by God. And for you to not have joy with God, then the, the Spirit is trying to tell you and would tell me that there's something that's not quite right. There's no way you can slide around and say, well, well I'm not happy or something's wrong. No, I don't have joy in my heart. Find out what it is, but I can tell you where it's going to be at. It's between me and the Father and the Son. That reconciliation. If I've got a clean slate between me and the Father and me and the Son and the Holy Spirit resides in here, and he does, and he doesn't, he doesn't leave us nor forsake us. What he does to us is keeps us on the right road and tries to keep us all close to him and have a fellowship. And I thought of this tonight or this morning, sitting in Sunday school right before we left this morning. <clears throat> Some of you have lost your parents, maybe one, maybe both. I don't know. 
I, I have mine, but my grandmother's passed away, <clears throat> my grandparents. And so, <clears throat> what would you give to have a little five-minute talk, ten minutes, perhaps an hour, to talk with? Do you miss it? The same thought come to me. That's the way the Lord looks at us. Jesus wants you to talk to him. He's done gone. He's the same place my grandparents are at. He's just sitting at the right hand of the Father. I can talk to him anytime I want to. I can't talk to my grandmother until I get there and see him. You can't talk to your mom and daddy if they've gone on until you get there. You can talk to God all day about it. What would you give if you knew that the Lord was never going to hear you again? It'd become important, wouldn't it? That five, ten minutes, fifteen, that's my point. That joy that's in our heart and that what Christ has done for us, I can talk to him. All day, parts of the day, you can have him, and he's there constantly. That joy that we have through Jesus Christ. See, that's the joy that just should flood our souls. You don't have to die and go to hell. You don't have to suffer alone. You don't have to do that no more. If you live to be 100 and you're into nursing home, over here, <clears throat> you're never going to be alone again. When I got out of the altar, the Lord resided in my heart, and he's never left me. Even when I wasn't doing what I should have been doing, he was still talking to me, saying, I love you. You need to do this. That's what he does. He wants us to have joy. In our heart, he wants us to have that peace that only comes from God. When we don't have that peace, then there's something off. And, and the thing about it is, God didn't need to be reconciled. We need to be reconciled. He loved us that much. This morning I wanted to point that out. He loved us so much that Christ came. And died for you and I. He did. Uh, God loves us that much that everything that he had in heaven was wrapped up. The most precious thing that was there is not the golden streets. It's not the, the city of Jerusalem that cometh down from heaven. The most precious thing there, the most uh, glorious thing there is his son. Jesus Christ. This morning, do you know him? Do you have him in your heart? Do you have joy? And if you don't, you can make amends this morning. Just like families that say, I'm sorry. It's such a flowing over feeling when you get to that place and it's just like that burden's lifted. It's the same thing with God. He still got his hand stretched out, saying, come unto me. Uh, uh, come to me this morning. While they prepare uh, to get a song this morning, where are you at? Are you reconciled with God? Do you know his son? If you don't know his son, you're not reconciled with God. Uh, you've got to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But he's commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. No greater love will you ever see and ever hear about than this. That what happened on Mount Calvary 2,000 some years ago, that God showed how much he loved us and what he has done for us this morning. Where is your heart at today? While the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you stand, and while they sing, 
behind the Lord this morning. It's always a joy to do this. Uh, I, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to do it. And Miss Diane, uh, uh, what, what's so great about it is uh, she come to know that she was missing something, missing the Lord, and she make those things right. You know, that's, that's what life's for, is to prepare for the day that you don't live no more. That's what it's all about, really. I mean, I, I understand that. Enjoy your family. Enjoy everything about life. But there's a preparation day. And I, I, I love her. Uh, and uh, I appreciate her and her family. I uh, appreciate that she's wise enough to make the right decision and to choose the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, it's my honor to get to baptize her today. And uh, I just want to thank her and, and uh, tell her that I love her and uh, you continue to pray for her and us so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I baptize you my sister in the name of the Holy Spirit God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. this time I guess we'll uh, dismiss uh, if you would stand to your feet uh.